JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Darison Chauskas. Today is the 12th, 12th of March 2020, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Thursday's morning session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product as always a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue Okay, also just before we jump in, quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, of course. And uh, as always, our um, GFD bank and specifically our GFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So, yep, guys, feel free to visit us here on JFDBank.com and click on the research, uh, research tab right there on the top. Now, while it's loading up, well, you can see it yourself here, jfdbank.com, and you click on the research tab right there. Um, right, the first, actually, what I wanted to show you, of course, is start off is with this gloomy picture. Now, of course, don't get me wrong, um, this is not really something that all of us would like to see. Um, just wanted to qu quickly kind of run by you this because yesterday the uh, the World Health Organization announced uh, that the coronavirus is now considered as a pandemic. So um, I hope you're all guys safe and sound. I hope you're all uh, pre taking precautions, taking measures uh, yourselves. And uh, yep, let's try to stay safe. And uh, as always, um, yep. Well, uh, you know, you know, basically what to do. But um, yep, just just basically uh, stay safe because let's put it that way. We don't want this to uh, increase even more. Um, as you can see, Italy has, re has added rap drastically in, uh, some cases here. So basically, it's now the second largest country. Um, after China with the, uh, the number of infected people and also the number of deaths as well. So you can see that in Italy now we have 827 uh, confirmed deaths related to coronavirus. So, oh, yep. So guys, something to consider, of course, as you probably also know, uh, the uh, the US came out yesterday with a, a travel ban. Um, so uh, from all for all travelers, coming from Europe um, apart from Great Britain. So yes, so something guys to consider. Um, and uh, yep, <clears throat> for now, I mean, looking at the markets, jumping into markets, uh, we saw the uh, the equities closing heavily in the red again. Um, so even though here the FTSE, as you can see, the FTSE here closed in, in slightly in the red here and during the main session, during the trading hours. But uh, if we look at the cash index, and let me just quickly jump, pick up on that, jump into that one. Um, the FTSE, the all the the uh, the cash uh, the cash indices continued to drift lower uh, after their uh, after the main indices closed. Um, so the cash indices, the futures market continued to drift lower. And looking at the price right now on the cash index of FTSE 100, we can see that the price is basically already below that target that I've spoke about uh, this whole week. The 5,788 zone, basically the lowest point of June 2016, and we are now below it. So we're currently currently trading at around 5,540 zone. Um, now, this is basically not far from this other key important area. And let me just actually probably recycle one of these lines here instead of drawing a new one. Um, so we're not far from uh, this this low, uh, the um, the low of, uh, let me just zoom in here a little bit to capture this. Um, so the lowest point of February 2016, and that's roughly around uh, 5,500 marks. So we're not far from there, guys. Uh, we're just only about 40, 40, 45 points away. So let's see if we can actually reach this today. 
for now this is not really looking good it's all uh, dark and gloomy or should I say uh, red and gloomy um, and uh, looking at this picture for now yes from the technical side I mean it continues to trade below this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 24th of February um, it continues to kind of clear these uh, support levels and uh, yep for now the only it's really difficult to jump on this one and maybe try to capture a bit of a, a swing back here a bit of retracement to the upside so that's why guys be very careful and basically um, the, the fact that we are now trading below the 5788 zone uh, yes this in, uh, of course this is not really looking good here we're now very close to uh, the lowest point of 2016 the lowest point of February 2016 that's roughly around the 5500 mark so that's what we're gonna be keeping an eye on today let's see if it, we can actually reach this and also don't forget that we may reach this level we all we could also overshoot this uh, we might get a false breakout and if the the daily candle still closes above this now this is where we could maybe consider a bit of a correction to the upside but again that's for now let's see how this is going to play out if we're going to get such a move but just to kind of for you to keep the scenario in your head if we get a drop drop lower if we get a test of this lowest point of 2016 um, if we do get an overshoot then yep keep your eyes on the daily candle and let's see how this is going to play out in terms of where it's going to close um jumping into silver now uh i looked at this one uh yesterday just a quick update on this not i'm not going to spend too much time on it because the still the still still the same idea remains because here what i was saying that um in order for us to aim for lower levels uh we would like to see a drop below the 16 uh 39 zone here which is the uh, the lowest point of February. Now, uh, again, don't get me wrong. Silver is also seen as a as a safe haven. So, uh, the only thing is that for now, this it's not really carrying that suit. Um, it there might be interest later on, but again, for now, uh, as you can see, the the commodity is kind of uh, fluctuating near this key area of support. But if this key area of support fails, then yep, further declines could be possible so for now guys keep your eyes on this one in terms of the upside uh, we will aim for slightly higher levels if we get a push above the 17.59 uh, uh, 59 zone which is the uh, high of the 9th of May or in other words the current uh, the, the highest point of this week so far so if we uh, because we still kind of uh, keep it level, we still keep a Friday as a potential day where something can change and uh, yep we could see this one pushing to the upside uh, but again for now uh, we're leaning more towards the downside but in order to get comfortable we need that break confirmation break first um, ethereum um, I've looked at this one yesterday and uh, basically what I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on some of these key support levels uh, you can see that the uh, the crypto managed to reach trace yesterday managed to climb back above the uh, the 200 day EMA here but today of course it's not really looking good here and drifted all the way again below the 189 zone then it reached our other target at 179 territory and uh, also yesterday I've mentioned this level here the 170 170.50 area roughly around there which as you can see also got tested so this is where the current holdup is occurring um, looking at this picture if this if the slide continues then uh, well keep your eyes on the uh, this area of support near the uh, 155 mark which is the low of the 24th of January so keep your eyes on that one um, just trade with China, uh, psychological 140 zone and, uh, and now we're going to keep an eye on this one. Of course, the high that we managed to reach here in uh, February was around the 1.4088 zone. Uh, the high of March is already to well it was tested it was reached today the highest point of March uh, but uh, if it continues to push higher we will target the 1.4088 zone that's the the highest point of February if that gets broken this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and not could look not good for uh for the singapore economy here so yep keep your eyes on this one very interesting chart very interesting uh, pair um although the dollar is not the strongest one and we, we know that but um 
yep for now the Singapore dollar is taking a strong hit uh, euro sec now something to consider uh, for today uh, maybe it's not something that you trade very often but uh, something maybe to keep an eye on and uh, we do have the uh, we, we do have some data coming out from Sweden these inflation data um, so for now let me just quickly double check uh, the uh, calendar here um, so the expectation i think if i'm not mistaken is for um for a uh, a bit of a drop in the rate so let me just quickly double check that so the cpi the headline cpi year on year is expected to remain the same at 1.3 um but the uh the month on month there we go the opposite way so the month on month figure is expected to have increased and quite significantly going from minus 1.4 percent to plus 0.6 so um we'll see how this performs maybe we could see a bit of a boost here uh on the uh for the swedish krona uh and um, we may see the swedish euro sec here maybe retracing back down um but let's not forget that this could be a short-term move because overall um the the headline i mean the headline cpi is quite far from the uh, the Riggs Bank's um, target of 2%. So that's why this could resume the uptrend again after that. So for now, for now, guys, keep your eyes on this one. Very interesting. Um, and uh, let's see how this is going to play out. If by any chance this suddenly starts dropping below yesterday's low, which was around the 1. Point, uh, sorry, 10 point sixty nine twenty zone, then uh, yes, we will aim for a bit of downside, but the downside will be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying because we are still above this upside support line taken from the low the 25th of december um AUDNZD, very quick update on this. I mean, I, I looked at this one yesterday and what I was saying that we need to see a drop below this little territory here, the uh, around the 1.03 mark. Um, you can see that right now the um, the pair is testing that area. Now all eyes are on this. If we get a strong move below this, then yes, the next target to consider is the lowest point of August 2019 and that's roughly around the 1.0265 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. Keep your eyes on this level and uh, because as you can see um, yes we could go further down but uh, there are no clear kind of levels here uh, underneath yet and apart from maybe this one which was seen in 2016 so the lowest point of September 2016 and that's roughly around um, this uh, roughly around the 1.0238 zone so basically not far from the uh, lowest point of August 2019 um, this little drop here, um, this happened in January, um, in the first days of, 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 of 2019. Um, but um, to be honest, this will be different. So I'm not going to really focus on this this spike lower because this uh, probably will be different on, on different platforms. So this, this lowest level here. So uh, that's why for now, keep your eyes on these two here. The lowest point of September 2016, around the 1.0 to uh, 38 and the lowest point of September 2019, the, sorry, lowest point of August 2019 near the 1.0265. Um, and of course, the big question here is, can this move further below the 1.03 mark? For now, it seems that it does want to do that. Uh, GBP CAD, now I wanted to quickly show you something here on the four hour chart, very interesting technical, uh, technical setup happening now, after kind of uh, reaching the uh, the high here near the 1.8058 zone this on Monday, the the pair started drifting lower, uh, moving to the downside, cl closer to to its upside support line taken from the low of um, March, uh, low the lowest point of March here. Uh, and uh, for now, this upside support line, if as long as it remains intact, it could in a way play as a good area of support. However, from the very short term perspective for now, there, there still might be a bit of a, a drift lower. But let's not forget that uh, the idea here is that for now, the uh, the pair seems to be forming somewhat of a falling veg pattern. So somewhere around these lines, basically, 
um, and now it's not really a channel but it's more of a falling veg so it's not really like a, a straightforward one but nevertheless yes we will keep an eye on this idea uh, don't get me wrong I mean of course these these tend to break to the upside uh, but before we could consider uh, such a move that we need to see a break of one of these sides and preferably of course of the upper side of this falling veg but again from the very short term perspective for now this could continue drifting a little bit lower uh, maybe like testing the uh, lower side of the of the veg here and uh, it could even drift all the way here towards this upside support line but if that upside upside line holds this is where it could become very interesting for the buyers um, if this rate decides not to travel all the way here towards this upside support line and starts reversing earlier yep keep your eyes on this um on the upper side of the uh, of the falling veg and also keep your eyes on the uh the high of or the intraday swing high of yesterday near the 1.7740 uh, but then of course keep your eyes on the highest point of yesterday near the 1.7817 and uh, a nice good pop above this could yep open the door towards higher levels but again for now guys keep this idea in your heads but we we need the confirmation break through the upper side of the falling wedge first before considering this um, this as a bull as a potential potential bullish pattern uh, USD JPY now I've talked about this one yesterday what I was saying that keep your keep your eyes on the 105 point uh, or in general 105 zone uh, we may see a push higher, but if it struggles to make its way above this downside line, then yep, we could see another round of selling. Of course, the whole market turmoil uh, came in handy here for the Japanese yen, which uh, attracted more buyers, and uh, USDJPY started drifting lower. Now, looking at this picture here, we need to be very careful, guys, and we need to be very cautious. Yes, although the yen could still be under buying interest, but that's if the markets will continue sliding lower, because if we start seeing maybe some sort of recovery in the market, maybe this could reverse back to the upside and uh, maybe travel to towards this downside line, uh, which if remains intact, uh, yes, we could see another round of selling. But if this gets broken, maybe a bit of larger extensions to the upside could be possible. For now, the way we could play this one out for today, for example, keep your eyes on the current lowest point of today, which is around the 1. Point, uh, sorry, 103.05 mark. A drop below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low here on the shorter on the very shorter time frame. And then, yes, we could target the lowest point of this week near the 101. 20 zone um, for now we'll be very careful and cautious here if this travels higher to be honest all this territory for us is a bit of a uh, a tricky one and a neutral one and now looking at this picture we would really like to see a break of this downside line and a push above the uh, the high of this week near the 105.92 zone a, a push above this barrier could in a way open the door towards higher levels for now guys be very careful with this and uh, yep uh, for now we're more bearish than bullish but we need some uh, we'll, we'll move down slowly uh, because of the kind of uh, the, the difficulty right now in the markets uh, euro usd finally on this one um, i looked at this one yesterday and basically the same idea remains uh, you can see yesterday i was talking about this level here the 1.1355 because what i was saying that if it holds uh, we could see another round of selling here so we did that did see something like that we did drop below the 1.1273 territory i drifted a little bit lower and, uh, and now we're seeing a bit of a, a recovery here again um, don't get me wrong uh, as long as we remain overall above of this upside support line taken from the low of the 21st of February uh, or the 20th actually somewhere around those lines around those days 20th or the 21st of February um, we will um, we will of course stay positive overall but from the very short term perspective um, basically if the if the rate continues to trade below this 1.1355 mark then yes more downside could be possible for those who are more on the cautious side um, what you could do here is wait for a drop below the yesterday's low um, or even better a drop below the highest point of December 2019 um, which is around the 1.1238 zone so a nice good drop below this could lead towards uh, slightly lower levels towards this upside support line for now um, it's a bit of a, in, an interesting situation here we did drift lower but now we're seeing a bit of a correction here to the 
to the upside. However, still the uh, the pressure here remains. Um, and if we actually also look at something else here and quickly look at the Fibonacci retracement, uh, we can, we'll, let's double check how much did it had actually retraced already. So um, it didn't really quite reach the 38.2% retracement on the Fibonacci. Uh, it did, yes, of course, reach the 23.6, but uh, didn't quite reach the 32 point, uh, 38.2. Um, we'll keep an eye on this one. We'll keep an eye on this territory, of course. Um, let's see if it actually can reach that. And uh, if, the, if it can, then maybe the next stop could be around the 50 mark, which could in a way come in line with the idea of seeing this pair drifting towards this upside support line. Okay, guys, I, I'll have to wrap it up here. Uh, thank you very much for sticking around and watching until the end. If you want to join me uh, later on at my traders tea time, as always, 14.15 GMT. For now, I hope you have a wonderful trading day, guys. Stay safe. Be very careful. Don't overtrade. Um, try to minimize your exposure to the market. And, uh, yep, like I said, try to stay, stay safe, guys, and health-wise as well. Thank you very much. And I'll see you later. Bye-bye.